Okay, so how well do you actually understand basic math? Well, if you have pretty strong basic math skills and knowledge, then this should be a very easy question to answer. And let's go to take a look at the actual problem. So we have this number 20, and the question is, which is not a factor of 20? Okay, now we have to be careful here because the question is, which is not? Like, which numbers are factors? No, which is not a factor of 20? And let's going to take a look at our choices. This is a multiple choice question. So A is 2, B is 4, C is 8, and D is negative 5. Again, which of these numbers here is not a factor of 20? All right, now, if you could figure this out, we're going to put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll fully explain what a factor is and why we need to understand this very, very important math word. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, pretty straightforward question here. You have to be careful, though, uh, because the question is, which is not a factor of 20? All right, let's go to take a look at the answer. The correct answer to this question is C, 8. 8 is not a factor of 20. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and a plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for knowing what this word factor means. And hopefully you know how to factor numbers. And then, obviously, it's very important to know why we have to factor in mathematics. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. This is not that difficult. And uh, let's start off with this super easy basic example. And we'll answer the question right now, what is a factor? All right, so let's take a look at the number 10. Now, obviously, our problem is 20. We'll get to that in just one second. But what is a factor in math? Well, hopefully you've heard of this word before. And if you haven't, again, this is a very, very, very important word in math. And there's all kind of different uh, related topics to factors in mathematics, uh, things like factoring, factorization. So uh, they're all kind of synonymous. But let's just go ahead and answer the question right now. And I'm going to do this in two ways. So let's take this uh, number 10 and let's look at the factors of 10. So what are factors of 10? 1, uh, 2, and 5. Because if we multiply 1 times 2 times 5, we get back to 10. So we could take a, a number and we break it up into other numbers such that we multiply these numbers and we get back to this number. These are the factors of 10. Now, uh, kind of by the... Um, yeah, more of a technical definition of a factor is uh, when you have that number, any number that you divide into that another number and the answer is remainder zero, well, then that number is a factor of this other number. So, for example, two is a factor of 10, all right? Why is two a factor of 10? Because we can take 10 and divide it by, uh, we can take 10 divided by two, and the answer is going to be 5 remainder 0. So when we divide one number by another number and the uh, answer is remainder 0, okay, we have no remainder, then that number is a factor of that other number. Okay, so <laughs> I think it's best to kind of see this in action. And there is another thing, too, called a factor tree. So, for example, like 10, we can break up 10 in terms of uh, one is, by the way, one is a factor of everything. So, uh, you know, we're not talking about prime factors here or other type of factors. We're just talking about the basic concept of uh, factors. But um, uh, oftentimes in basic math, we use something called a factor tree. So these are like the little branches. So 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5. Again, these are factors of 10. And specifically, these are prime factors of 10. Okay, so there's another kind of subtopic of factors and factorization, which are prime factors. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. Now, with that uh, in mind, let's go and take a look at the actual problem. So this is uh, pretty straightforward, assuming you know how to divide. All right, let's just kind of check these things one by one. So we'll go through 
our first uh, option here too. So remember, the question is, which is not a factor of 10? So all we have to do is just divide each of these numbers. I'm sorry, a factor of 20. Uh, all we have to do is just uh, divide uh, each of these numbers into 20, and we're thinking, hey, which one of these numbers doesn't have a remainder of zero? This should hopefully be pretty obvious for most of you out there, but we'll just kind of review it step by step. So let's take this first one, and uh, we have 20 divided by 2. Well, yes, 20 uh, can be divided by 2 without a remainder, and the answer is 10. Remember, remainder is 0, okay, because 2 times 10 is 20. So therefore, 2 is a factor of 20. All right, so how about 4? Well, can 4... Can 20 be divided by 4 without a remainder? Yes, it can. The answer is 5, remainder 0. So 4 is a factor of 20. All right, so now we get to our answer, which is not a factor of 8. Well, it is C, okay, 8, because if we take 20 and we try to divide it by 8, we're going to get 2, remainder 4. Remember our old school uh, division here, right? So 20 divided by 8, so uh, 8 goes in 22 times, 2 times 8 is 16, so we subtract right here, and we have 4, 8 can't go into 4, so we have remainder equals 4, right, so uh, we don't have remainder uh, of 0, so therefore 8 is not a factor of 20, okay, all right, but uh, I think a lot of you might have selected a negative 5. You're like, hey, Mr. Two Math Man, I just don't like negative numbers. I think negative 5 is not a factor of 20. Well, that is not uh, the case because by definition, remember, um, a negative uh, a, uh, factor is where the remainder is equal to 0. So can 20, can negative 5 go into 20 without a remainder? Yes. The answer is negative 4. Okay. Matter of fact, let's take a closer look at that right here. Because negative 5 times negative 4 is a positive 20. So if we looked at a uh, 20 in terms of a factor tree, let me do this right here, uh, assuming that you know a thing or two about positive and negative numbers. So 5 times 4, okay, these are factors of a positive 20, but so is negative 5 and negative 4, because negative times a negative is a positive. So negative 5 and negative 4 are factors of a positive 20. I mean, it might look a little kind of sneaky, but indeed uh, they are, okay? All right, so again, factors are uh, when you take one number and you divide it into another, another number and you get a remainder of zero. All right, now, why do we even want to know this stuff? Well, let's talk about this right now. So why we factor? Okay, why is this important? Well, this is a very, very, very important uh, uh, topic and procedure. Uh, I'm talking about factoring and factorization in all levels of math. Okay, basic math all the way up through algebra and beyond. Okay, all right. So I'm going to give you two quick, simple uh, reasons why we need to factor. And uh, we're, let's use uh, fractions here, for example. Uh, so we'll talk about the lowest common denominator and simplifying, which is another fancy word for reducing a fraction. All right, so how you find the LCD actually involves factors. Uh, I'm not going to get into this because uh, this is uh, kind of a little, uh, its own little mini lesson, but we can definitely talk about uh, simplifying or reducing a fraction to uh, see why we need to understand this word factor. All right, so let's go and do that right now. But before we take that step, I need you to take this step, which is to hit that subscribe button. Now, I am not too, uh, not afraid to ask for help. I'm definitely not shy to post these videos. I love teaching math, but here is the deal. As a math teacher, you know, I'm pretty sad if I don't have a big classroom. I'm trying to help as many people as possible. And the only way to uh, have my content reach and help uh, as many people as possible is to get people like yourself saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, all right, I'll have, uh, uh, you know, some compassion on. Uh, I'll give you a break. I'll hit your little subscribe button and your notification bell just so you can be quiet and move on with the rest of the video. Well, that's good enough for me. But here is my little last message for you. If you are struggling in math, you need to understand this word. You got to get help, okay? Uh, so where do you, who do you ask, you know, where should you get help? Well, if you are a student, always go to your teacher first. But beyond that, if you need full course instructional kind of review or assistance, 
Check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. Also, I have like 3,000 plus uh, YouTube videos on my channel and I'm posting all the time, but just don't stay stuck. Make sure you get help. Now let's go ahead and uh, finish this video up and talk about why it's important to factor. All right, so uh, we have uh, this uh, word factor. Okay, now let's take 20 and factors of 20 are four and five. Okay, now we have 45, nine, and five are factors of 45, but so is three. Three times three are factors of 45. That's not important. We don't have to list out all the factors to describe a number for, um, as a factor. Okay, for example, two is also a factor of 20, but four and five are factors of 20. There are other factors to include prime factors, okay? Now, the uh, process of taking a number, okay, and listing its factors is called factoring. Okay, now how do you how do you factor a number? Well, you have to be very good at division. Okay, which of course means you need to know a thing or two about multiplication. So we want to take these numbers, we want to break them down. But in this particular example, uh, I'm kind of explaining why we need to factor. Okay, well, one of the easiest kind of um, examples to demonstrate the importance of factoring and factors is when we simplify a fraction. Okay, you definitely don't want to do this. Uh, you don't want to leave your answer like 100 over 200 for those of you are, that are math students. Okay, 100 over 200. Like, yes, we can write this easier as the fraction one half. We can simplify or reduce this fraction down. We're going to reduce it down to this fraction. One half is equivalent to 100 over 200. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't really care. I'll leave my problem like this. Well, your teacher's not going to like that. And uh, really, this is not mathematically correct to leave um, values unsimplified. So it's important that you fully simplify uh, number expressions and variable expressions for those of you that are going to be getting into algebra. But the way we do that is through factoring and identifying like factors. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about uh, with respect to a fraction. So when you want to simplify a fraction, you want to re, um, factor the respective numerators and denominators, but what you are thinking, all right, you're like, all right, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Fans, tell me to think about something. What you're trying to do is identify like factors. In other words, uh, the same factors that uh, a factor or multiple factors that are part of this number and this number, the numerator and denominator. So you might be saying to yourself, all right, 20 is 4 times 5. Hey, I think a 5 goes into 45. 9 times 5 is uh, um, also 5 is uh, a factor of 20, and 5 is also a factor of 45. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So this is what we call like factors. So if you could break your numerator and denominator up, such that you identify like factors, well, we can do something pretty awesome that's called cross-canceling. We can simply just cross-cancel these factors because five divided by five is one. Or effectively, these just kind of go away. And here, what remains is our answer, four over nine. Now, of course, you want to look and make sure there's no other factors that can be cross-canceled, but this is the final answer, okay? So when we are simplifying or reducing fractions, whether they be numeric fractions or algebraic fractions, this process of identifying like factors, uh, factorization, factoring is a huge topic in math. And matter of fact, a lot of uh, students struggle in algebra because they can't factor, and they can't factor because they never really learned the basics. So I'm gonna leave um, this video on this kind of um, uh, message, if you will. For those of you that are looking to relearn math, uh, or improve in math, or maybe you're struggling in math, what you have to do is build a strong foundation. This is no different than kind of building a house, right? You got to get the foundation super strong. And I think a lot of people are like, yeah, that's basic stuff, Ms. D2 Math Man. I want you to show me the calculus. Let's do calculus in five minutes. Hey, listen, you know, we're not going to do calculus. Let's make sure you can, even, you know, deal with fractions and positive and negative numbers. So let's take the time review, build your um, foundational skills up super strong, and then this other stuff that you build your little house of math on top of is going to really uh, go so much smoother. So for those of you that want to review like factors or fractions and things like that, uh, there's a couple uh, quick courses that you may want to check out. Uh, I'll leave links to those in the description of this video. So those would include my Math Foundations course. That's a quick little math boot camp, real short, uh, small course. 
basically uh, reviews all that arithmetic that you forgot way back in elementary and primary school. If you want to take it a step further, check out my math skills rebuilder course. We'll go through basic math and algebra, geometry, some other stuff as well. And uh, for those of you that might be, in the, let's say, taking a full course, you uh, definitely need to understand fractions as part of uh, all courses, but I teach them formally as well in my pre-algebra course. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.